I'm Joni Ray. For 15 years, I've helped leaders and organizations navigate change and embody their visions every single day. I believe that transformed individuals, teams, and organizations operating at their highest potential is critical to teaching the next generation how to create positive impact. And for adults and youth, that includes managing and resolving conflict. Understanding conflict and how you approach it is critical to being an effective coach and mentor to youth in your community. Welcome to Developing, Mentoring, and Supporting Youth Leadership. This lesson is Strategies for Personal Conflict Resolution. In this lesson, we are going to walk through what conflict is, what it isn't, and how to best go about managing and resolving it. Conflict resolution may not be one of your favorite topics. Now, the word conflict already starts to throw us off. What comes to mind right away when you hear the word conflict? Scary, not fun, a hassle, a necessity, something I'd rather avoid, something I need to tackle head on. Whatever you're thinking about conflict, I'd like you to consider one thing. Your preconceived notions are coming from past experiences you may have had with conflict, what you were taught in the past about conflict, and ultimately the beliefs you determined about conflict over time. Maybe conflict left you emotionally drained with regrets, or maybe conflict is something you'd rather not deal with at all. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is a completely different, even transformative way of thinking about conflict. How you think is going to completely determine your success with conflict. Why? Because your beliefs, thoughts, and attitudes shape and determine your reality. Since this is the case, we're going to spend some time discussing the default conflict mindset versus the desired conflict mindset the default conflict mindset. There are many different ways we can approach conflict. A few key ways are by avoiding it, competing with it, and accommodating it. As you work with young leaders in your community, ask them to think through which one they most identify with. Be sure to tell them they weren't born with any of these categories. These behaviors were learned and taught at a very young age, and their past beliefs about conflict continue to be reinforced. Be sure to go over all the exercises in this lesson with yourself first, before you facilitate conversations with the leaders you are working with. It's best for you to be self-aware of your own beliefs, thoughts, and actions so that you can use yourself and your insights as examples as you train others. Now, let's briefly go over these default ways to think about conflict. The avoider. Do you run away from conflict? Does conflict make you feel extremely uncomfortable? Have you tried confronting conflict in the past with results you weren't happy with? Do you just want everyone to get along at all times? Do you walk the other way when people are in conflict? The competitor. Do you have to be right? Do you use reason and logic in all arguments so that you can show your point of view is valid? Do you prefer to not back down from a fight? Do you keep the conflict going for as long as it takes for you to make your view seen and heard? Do you like arguing? The accommodator. Do you engage in conversations where there is disagreement? but always leave the conversation allowing the other person or people to have their way? In the end, does it seem like other people are always satisfied while you are left with not feeling satisfied? Do you not like speaking up in groups? Would you rather just let majority rule and keep the conversation going? It's okay if you don't closely identify with any of these options or if you feel like you align with two maybe all three at times. Most likely, however, one of these will be more prevalent than the other two. For this exercise, identify the behavior you most align with most of the time. Now, let's discuss the desired conflict mindset. 
And after that, we'll talk about specific things you can apply immediately to turn conflict into something that will benefit everyone. The desired conflict mindset. Before we dive into the desired conflict mindset, we first need to dismantle the word conflict. Instead of it being something bad, wrong, something to avoid or debate we love to engage with, let's see if we can redefine conflict all together with a brand new lens and perspective. What if instead, conflict was an opportunity for something great to happen? What if we could look at conflict and instead of running away from it or getting ready to put on our boxing gloves, we welcome the conflict with open arms and in appreciation. As uncomfortable as conflict may be and as unnatural it may feel to welcome conflict, this is the muscle we must exercise in order for conflict to benefit us. Now, let's redefine conflict and move forward with a new shared understanding. Productive conflict is defined as an open exchange of conflicting or differing ideas in which parties feel equally heard, respected, and unafraid to voice dissenting opinions for the purpose of reaching a mutually comfortable resolution. Let's break down our new definition. An open exchange of conflicting or differing ideas. This means we are all going into the conflict with the understanding that we are going into a conversation knowing that people's views will be different. Now, imagine if we were okay with this going in. Instead of being taken aback, feeling threatened or combative, just know that the differences in opinion will happen and that's okay. In which parties feel equally heard, respected and unafraid to voice dissenting opinions. If there is a rule that everyone feels safe and respected to voice their differing and maybe unpopular opinion, then people will be more inclined to open up. Having a neutral and trusted person present to create and monitor these rules is preferred to ensure everyone is heard. If you're leading youth in this discussion, that's you. For the purpose of reaching a mutually comfortable resolution. Let's agree to disagree, but let's also know that the goal is to come up with a way to move forward. If people are just arguing for the sake of arguing and being right, then there is no way to ensure that everyone will walk away with a clear understanding. Now that we have redefined conflict with a brand new perspective, let's talk about essential ingredients for successful conflict resolution. Five strategies for successful conflict resolution. First, be empathetic and practice active listening. Help the other person feel like you actually understand them. Repeat what they are saying. It makes them feel like you hear them. Acknowledge and say what they are most committed to. Why are they in the conversation and what is most important to them? Give feedback constructively and in a way it can be heard. First, say something that is going well. Then, say what is not working. Finally, end with something else going well. Avoid using the word should. People tend to get defensive. Instead of telling people what they should do, use phrases like, have you thought of, or you may want to consider, or I recommend. Get out of the blame game and take responsibility. Acknowledge what you could have done better, what you have learned, or apologize if needed. This will diffuse any emotions and help the other person calm down. Finding neutral locations for the conversations is key. Avoid speaking in a location that a person is used to or accustomed to. Choose locations for these conversations in a neutral place. And finally, don't take anything personally. Stay committed to the goal. Remember, everything that is said is not personal. Stay committed to the outcome of walking away with a mutual plan and way ahead. Being able to understand the default conflict mindset, finding the desired conflict mindset, and using basic strategies for resolving conflict will help you guide youth in your community to positive outcomes. For more on this course and to access related resources, visit us on the web.